over the next few minutes, we will go over what we mean by relationship systems intelligence, provide an overview of what the five principles are, why they were defined, what the benefits are to you and your clients when you work with them, and provide you with some practices to help you develop your relationship system intelligence. By the end of the video, you'll find that you will understand what you already know in a new way. As relationship systems coaches, even as newly trained coaches, you will have a felt experience of what it means to see and work with relationship systems. Yet many of us find it challenging to provide a concise or satisfying explanation to non-coaches that captures what we know about working with relationship systems intelligence. Especially when sharing what it is for the first time. Well, let's see the five principles of RSI helps with that. At the core of your work as systems coaches is relationship systems intelligence. You use ORS tools and the skills to tap into this intelligence. But building our capacity to develop our relationship systems intelligence and that of our clients requires us to orient to and from a set of principles that go beyond the tools and skills. And the principles have always been there, but the change is to articulate them. When we talk about RSI, what we mean is the ability to work skillfully with the emotional aspects of all levels of relationship, self, other, and group or whole. In other words, RSI is the capacity to read, understand, and intentionally interact with the dynamics of human relationships. CRR Global developed RSI to include and transcend emotional intelligence and social intelligence, popularized by Daniel Goldman. Up until now, horse practitioners have learned the theory and practice of horse tools and skills. It was time for the material to evolve and articulate the principles that act as a guide for the work of systems coaches. The principles give the tools and skills meaning and provide a common language to align ourselves around when we're doing systems work. These principles provide a set of underlying truths or beliefs that explain how relationships work and how to build the capacity for them to improve. Whether it's helping relationships access its intelligence and resources, or to improve the interaction between its members. Think of these principles as your companions. When we step into the role as a Norse practitioner, we hold these principles as truths. Using the principles, you will be able to diagnose a system and assess what's needed much quicker and more effectively than without them. You can recover to them when you feel hooked into the system and reorient your focus back to what the relationship you are coaching needs. Since the ORSC tools and skills resonate with the principles, you can be much more intentional about which tools and skills you need to use to amplify each principle. What's more, as systems coaches, you're always looking for alignment. The principles are easy to understand and align around. You can educate your clients about them and help them build up their RSI capacities without them having to train as systems coaches. Ultimately, this helps you to have more of an impact in your world work. And since principles go beyond the tools and skills, you can use them to grow your practice and mastery. You'll be able to create, adapt, or incorporate other tools and skills that bring the principle of RSI to life. As we share principles, whether you are an orcs practitioner or someone interested in relationships, you will certainly feel as though you're understanding something that you have known your whole life, but in a new way. As an orcs practitioner trained before 2020, you will recognize some of these principles from your training. The difference is that at the time they were presented as concepts or ideas rather than fundamental truths of RSI that they now represent. So, what are the principles? Principle number one, accessing the team's entity. Each relationship system has its own unique identity or personality, just like a person has its own identity or personality. The team's entity is a blend of the characteristics of its members, gaining its power, intelligence and resources from the individuals in the team. When you shift your attention from the individual 
and focus on the system, you see a solid, resilient, energetic force that members of the group can lean into and find strength. If individuals do not see this or participate fully, this will impact the resource and expression of the relationship. An intelligent team with high RSI will hold the relationship system as the main focus, rather than the individuals in the relationship. Creating a culture that encourages each person to be curious and listen for the team's own entity voice. Principle number two tells us to hear, see and feel the team and that every member of the relationship system is a voice of the system. This principle is about recognizing that everyone in the system sees only part of the truth. Still, every truth is relevant and carries its essential information, holding that notion that everyone is right only partially. Think of a relationship's voice as a jigsaw puzzle, and everyone has a piece of that jigsaw. It invites the reinterpretation of people's experiences and perspectives, not belonging solely to that individual, but as an expression of the whole. And it advocates that relationships are healthy and can navigate the trials and tribulations of life and work, when all voices of the systems are heard and understood, including the unpopular ones. Failure to listen to voices on the outskirts means missing important insights or vital information. Having high RSI means that the team members are open to and value the expression of a range of different voices because they know it is a system speaking as one. They remain curious in the face of unpopular voices and seek out the wisdom of those that are quiet and marginalized. Now let's look at the qualities and characteristics of a system. Principle number three, the team has the answers. Relationship systems are naturally intelligent, generative, and creative. This principle helps team members lean into the system's capabilities and creativity. It even allows us to view changes and disturbance of any kind as an ally. Trusting the team entity's resourcefulness to find its own answers. Conflict and chaos are seen as signals and messages to co-create from rather than react to. They indicate something new is trying to happen. The more RSI a relationship has, the more collectively intelligent, generative, and creative it can be to transform its team culture, enhance its results, and increase its performance. Roles are important in relationship systems. That leads us to principle number four, roles belong to the team. Relationship systems rely on roles for their organization and execution of functions. This principle is about how relationships operate. Every relationship has its own functional and emotional needs to be fulfilled through roles and people in the system occupy these roles. But it's important to recognize that people are not roles and roles are not people. The roles belong to the system. And these roles may be outer roles like the CEO, finance director in a work context or mother, father in a personal scenario. Or the roles may be inner roles such as peacekeeper, devil's advocate or joker. Outer roles fulfill structural functions for the relationship survival, while inner roles satisfy emotional needs. This principle requires the most significant mental shift in team and leadership focus, because it asserts that all roles, including leadership roles, are available to anyone in a relationship to occupy. Teams and groups with high RSI create a culture of co-responsibility and co-accountability where everyone's input and roles are valued. Leadership then becomes a quality rather than a role. And how does all of this help us navigate change? Principle number five, change is constant. Relationship systems are in a constant state of emergence. The final principle, is to recognize that relationship systems are in a constant state of emergence. The premise is to accept that change is constant, natural, and inevitable. Sometimes change comes from the outside, other times from within. Most people are averse to change because of the uncertainty it brings and the fear of the unknown. 
This can lead to different experiences and perspectives of what is happening and what needs to happen with others. Relationships with high levels of RSI do not see conflicts and disagreements as a problem, but as signals that change is needed. It shifts the focus from who is doing what to whom to what is trying to happen in our system. This also makes it more comfortable to accept that no system lasts forever and to recognize that they have a natural life cycle with a beginning, middle and end. Allowing relationships to healthily let go of one system and allow, allow another to emerge. And there you have it. Relationship Systems Intelligence now has five principles that you can use to enhance your practice as a systems coach. Think of them as an instrument to be aware of when you work with a system or a lens to see a system through. Building your RSI is not difficult, but it does require intentional practice and an ability to truly hold the perspective of the system, team or group. Here are some things you can try. Practice deep democracy where all voices of a system are heard and honoured, including the unpopular ones. Practice appreciative inquiry where one builds on ideas after appreciating what was said by other parties. Increase positivity in a team or a group until there's a five to one ratio of positive to negative interactions. Decrease negative interactions with softer startups and using repair bids in difficult conversations. Increase positivity during conflict so that a lighter field is held and avoid toxic communication styles such as blaming, defensiveness, stonewalling, contempt and controlling.